In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Civibi Brigand. And at the end, I'm gonna tell you why you should or shouldn't buy it. Hey everyone, it's Wes Newman with The Pocket Perspective. If you're new here, this channel focuses on reviews and how-tos of EDC gear, knives, flashlights, things like that. And if you're not new here, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Sabivi Brigand. I'm gonna cover the specs, followed by the design and build quality. I'll weave my experiences of the knife throughout, finish with a quick summary, and then tell you why you should or shouldn't buy the knife. So with that, let's get started with the specs. This is what I would consider a medium-sized knife. Blade length is coming in just under three and a half inches at 3.46 or 88 millimeters. Handle length or closed length is just under four and a half at 4.45 or 113 millimeters. And the overall is just under eight inches at 7.92 or 201 millimeters. Handle thickness is just over half an inch, 0.51 or 13 millimeters. And the blade stock is 0.12 inches or three millimeters. Weight on this is reported to be 3.77 ounces or 107 grams. On my scale, it's just below that uh, 3.72 uh, ounces there. So the knife is just over that uh, ounce per inch mark. Has what I would consider a uh, modified sheep's foot uh, style blade. Has a high flat grind on it there. It's almost full flat. Uh, the steel on this is D2. And see if I can get it to show there. You can see the marking there, just barely on the blade. The handles are G10 on top of stainless steel liners. This is a liner lock. It has a, a left or right side tip up uh, clip. This is made in China. MSRP is uh, $70 and these can be found at retailers for right about 60. And then uh, behind the edge thickness on this, Coming in just at 20,000. So nice behind the edge thickness, nice flat grind. This is definitely what I would consider a slicer. And those are your specs. Let's go ahead and compare the Brigand to a few other knives. Starting off with the Paramilitary 2, and you can see these are very comparable. If we line up the knives, you can see the, the blade lengths and the cutting edges are very similar. Both have that uh, front finger choil and overall lengths are very similar as well. Looks like the, the PM2 may have it beat out just a little bit in overall length. So that means it's definitely going to be bigger than the PM3 or the Para 3. Uh, you can see the handle lengths are, are actually very comparable, uh, but the blade length is definitely longer on the Brigand. And then finally, bring in the Spyderco Smock, which I think is a, is a very comparable knife. And you can see uh, overall lengths are very similar. It looks like the, the Brigand, uh, looks like they're just about the same. Just about the same. It uh, looks like the, the Brigand has a little bit uh, longer cutting edge though. So those are your comparisons. Moving on to the design of the knife. The Brigand was released in late 2019. Uh, it comes in a couple different handle colors, uh, as well as now you can get one in a Damascus blade uh, with either copper or uh, brass handles that looks pretty cool too. Aesthetically, I really like the looks of this knife. Uh, it really appeals to me. And I think part of it is just the nice uh, lines. It's just the, uh, it has really great lines in my opinion. And this is one of those knives to me, when I first saw it, I was just, uh, you know, really uh, attracted to it. I knew I was going to end up with one of these. And I love this blade shape. It's a very practical blade shape. Uh, this is something uh, that uh, is really useful. I like lower tips on knives, uh, mainly because when you go to open something or go to puncture something, if the tip's way up here, you end up, uh, you know, having to tilt your hand even more to, to puncture into something. The lower the tip is, I just find it more comfortable and more ergonomic to use. And I like this nice uh, swooping belly here. It's very useful and uh, it's got this flat grind on it that's, that's pretty high. 
It also has a finger choil on it, and I, I like finger choils a lot. Uh, for one, they serve as both a sharpening choil, and then two, they give you um, you know a place to choke up. And so you know, overall, the, the lines on this are, are very, very nice. Uh, you know, this, uh, this blade, you know, the, the modified sheep's foot or reverse tanto, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, it, it is really nice. Um, I like this, uh, this swedge that they put on top. It also has a little bit of jimping here and um, also jimping right there on the flipper. Uh, and this is, again, D2 steel. And if we look at uh, the markings on the blade, that is the only markings on the blade. And that's one thing I really appreciate about Civivi is they don't go marking up their knives at all. Obviously they put their logo here on the pivot. And I know that some people like that and some people don't. I don't mind it uh, because the rest of the knife is super, super clean. Just has that one small marking on the back. Uh, you know, th again, this is D2 and you know, that's basically becoming the default budget steel now. And uh, I like D2, I think it's, it's, a good, uh, it's a good steel. You know, it's semi stainless. And you still see a lot of custom knife makers utilizing it. You know, there's, of course, there's a lot better steels out there, but you know, for the price point of this, I think it's, it's, it's great to use on this knife. The action on this knife is really good and it's running on bearings. The flipper tab is well designed, so the geometry works good. I like this uh, rounded uh, flipper tab and the jimping is just about perfect. Really no false starts, you know, it wants to drop shut and with a little bit of a shake, it'll go ahead and close all the way. So the detent feels really good. Uh, you know, I think that uh, for $60, this is, this is punching well above that in the action category. This is utilizing a liner lock and it also has some jimping there and it's got nice access to the liner. Uh, you know, I see a lot of knives uh, you know, coming out and they just very little access to this liner. And I, I don't understand it, but this has got just the right amount. And uh, the jimping is just about perfect on it. Lockup is right there about 40%. So that's, a, you know, kind of where you want to see it on a liner. The handles on this are G10 uh, on top of stainless steel. And you can see they're shadow boxed, uh, which I'm sure that helps cut cost a little bit. You know, they don't have to have uh, perfect precision or they don't have to uh, do a final finishing step of, of making sure they made up. Um, and then, you know, they're, they're textured. I don't think this is peel ply. I don't know, it may be, but uh, I think it, it, it may have been a milled texture in there. And then it's got a chamfer, uh, you know, almost all the way around. You know, one little nitpick, I wish the chamfer would have maintained the same offset all the way around this corner right here. This just kind of throws off the aesthetics a little bit in my opinion, so. I would have liked to have seen that offset, you know, been maintained around that corner right there. Again, that's small. Uh, this lanyard hole on the back is uh, unobtrusive, which I like. Also has this uh, matching uh, G10 uh, backspacer. Uh, so the handles are, are quite comfortable. I really, I really like them. Uh, moving on to the hardware, this is using T8s and then T6s on the clip. And so. Uh, you know, nice hardware, um, just one uh, screw on the back for the pivot. Um, and then this is actually indexed into the handle here to, to keep the C in the right spot. Uh, you know, talking about the Ergos, I've already talked about them a little bit. You know, again, this knife, the Ergos and the, the lockup feel really good to me. Uh, I, I like this in the hand, you know, it, it's got multiple uh, positions here and um, and it works in, in multiple grips for sure. So, um, you know, the, the, the reverse draw is, is a little uncomfortable for me, but it's, it's not terrible. Um, but th this is definitely can be used in a reverse grip. And, you know, um, I, it, it's, just a, it's just got good ergonomics in general for my hand. And there's still, you know, I've got small, medium hands and there's still a full finger left. So I think this is gonna fit most people's hands. Uh, and then, you know, the jimping is pretty good. You know, like, like most knives, you know, the jimping is, is not quite far enough forward. I, I just, I don't understand this is, you know, most people's thumbs are gonna be landing right about here. And so this needs to be, you know, a, a full, you know, half an inch to three quarters of an inch farther forward. And I really wish that manufacturers would start to do that. Um, but the ergos on this are good. I will say that the clip has a hot spot on it and, 
Almost all Sabibi knives are use this clip and they all have hot spots. And uh, this, this clip just needs rounded off right there. And so this portion, you know, this, this, this clip comes all the way to the back here, but this right here, this corner always digs into my palm. And uh, you know, it's not, it's not terrible, but it does, you know, make, it, it's also a pivot point. And so, you know, the knife wants to like rotate around. You can see it there. It's wanting to rotate around on that clip. And so I really wish that they would, they would round that off. You can see, you know, it's just digging in just a little bit. Um, you know, it may eventually cause a hot spot if you're doing a lot of work with it, but I really wish uh, Sabibi would address that. You know, moving on to the carry, I've already mentioned it a little bit. Um, this does have countersunk screws. Clip is not countersunk, but um, you know, it does carry very nicely. And you can see it comes pretty much all the way to the back here. And then, you know, if you've watched any of my videos before, I've talked about uh, clip angle. And so this has got a nice clip angle. You know, it's not directly down the center line, so it's gonna cant the, the knife in your pocket a little bit, which is nice because this does have a flipper tab, a flipper tab. And uh, if this is pushed out in your pocket at all like this, you're just gonna have a bigger chance of ramming your pinky you know, right into the flipper tab. So the, the farther they can get it over like this in your pocket, uh, the more comfortable it's gonna be for sliding your hand down in here. So let me show you what it looks like in the pocket. Okay, so this is just a you know, pretty standard pair of jeans and you can see there, uh, it, when I push it all the way down, it does sink all the way down in the pocket. And, uh, you know, I really don't have a problem, you know, putting my hand in here at all. Again, it does have that flipper tab. Uh, but this knife is long enough where it, you know the flipper tab is, is pretty far down in there and so it does carry nice you know again I'm, I'm a big right rear pocket carrier and this knife definitely carries better back here for me uh, like like most knives a lot of times i carry two knives a bigger knife right here and then a smaller knife in my front right or uh, a lot of times I'll, I'll carry a really small knife in my in my fifth pocket, but uh, yeah, carry on this knife is good. I'll, you know, the, the deep carry clip is really nice. There's really not much, not much showing here at all. Uh, yeah, so uh, carry is good. Moving on to the build quality. As with all CVV knives that I've ever owned or handled, it's excellent. Uh, Every time I'm pretty much blown away by the build quality and the price point of these knives. Uh, they really do a fantastic job uh, on execution. You know, most of the designs are really nice too and the execution is always top notch. The action on these knives are good. You know, uh, so starting with the blade, uh, the grinds on this uh, look absolutely perfect as you would expect with a machine knife. Um, I like this finish that's on it. Um, it's, it's kind of a satin finish. It looks a, a, a bit like a scotch bright finish to me, uh, but the, the grinds look good. Um, the swedge is nice. Everything is, is, is really well done. You know, there's a bit of a chamfer here uh, on, that, uh, on that finger choil. And uh, you know, they, they did a good job, uh, you know, a little bit of a chamfering here all the way back on the flipper tab as well. The handles, again, I've already mentioned this, you know, they look uh, perfect. Um, I don't see any issues whatsoever in uh, the, uh, the milling, you know, it looks good, except for, you know, like I've already mentioned, I don't think this is build quality. Uh, you know, I just really wish that that was uh, an offset that they would have maintained all the way around there. Um, you know, the, the lockup, again, I've already talked about that. Is, is really good. It's it, it's exactly where you'd expect it to be. Um, and the centering is perfect as well, right in the center. And then also uh, sharpening is absolutely perfect. Uh, this, this knife, you know, coming in at 20 thousandths and the sharpening looks perfectly even all the way from the heel to the tip from there to the there, there. So it's the same width all the way across and it's extremely sharp. And so Sabibi does a fantastic job with their sharpening. You know, they tell you the truth, they're putting some American companies to shame on uh, execution and sharpening, uh, even just um, the thinness of their grinds. Like they're doing a really good job 
And uh, you know, this is a great, uh, a great budget knife. And uh, you know, I have a hard time not recommending when someone comes and asks me, you know, what's a good starter knife or what's a good budget knife, not recommending Sabibi. And a lot of times I do. And this knife in particular, um, this is, I don't own a ton of duplicates unless it's uh, Spydercos and I'm collecting them, but I actually own two of these knives. And uh, so that tells you how much I actually uh, like this this particular knife. And just Sabibi in general, I think they, they do a fantastic job. And even, you know, uh, the, the parent company, Wii, um, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of all the Wii uh, designs. There's a few of them that I like, uh, you know, I've had a few of them and they do a great job on those as well. So overall build quality is excellent. While we're looking at build quality, let's go ahead and Rockwell test the blade. Okay, so I think I'm going to just put it right up in there. There's not a whole lot of clearance there. I uh, try to make it where you're not gonna see the, the divot when it's open or closed, of course. Even when you're uh, closing it, I like to have it not shown. Setting the zero here. All right. Applying the preload. So we set the preload there and then reset the scale. And then I apply the 150 kilogram force. that and then I pull it back to the set point and I read it and let's see there pull it back to the set point and read it and it looks like we're oh uh, about we're close to 59 58. 58 and a half, 59, somewhere in there. It's really close. I'm gonna get that on camera. Probably about 59. So uh, not <clears throat> not bad. Um, you know, I would have liked to seen it just over 60 or 61 for D2. Now you can see uh, the divot there. But this is this is uh, within their specs. I believe they call 58 to 60. So it's right there at the top end of their specs. In summary, I think the Sabibi Brigand is an absolute great knife. This is uh, something that I really like the looks of. The blade shape is super useful. I like the multiple hand positions with the front finger choil. Ergos are really good. Action is, is fantastic. The, the clean lines uh, are something that you know I'm drawn to. It's got a nice deep carry clip. And you know, if I was in the trades and needed a knife that I used hard every single day, this is also something that I would be looking at. You know, it's at that price point that I wouldn't be afraid to really use it hard and not have to worry about you know breaking it or scratching it because it's it's, it's somewhat affordable and easy to replace. So this is something I would definitely recommend to others. Moving on to why you should or shouldn't buy the knife. You should buy it if you're looking for a good mid-sized slicer. You should buy it if you want a flipper with great ergos. And finally, you should buy it if you're on a budget. And why you shouldn't buy it. You shouldn't buy it if you don't like flippers. You shouldn't buy it if you want something that is truly stainless. And finally, you shouldn't buy it if you want something made in the US. And with that, I just wanna thank you for watching. Let me know down in the comments what you think about the Sabibi Brigand. And as always, if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks and have a great day.